art nerds, we have reviewed a lot of weird and wonderful watercolor here on the channel over the years from travel with you watercolor watches that unfold and transform and uh, shed paint, but unfold, transform, and are ready to go when you are for plain air painting to not so great watercolor fans that wibble wobble and can't seem to hold their shape. This actually just looks like the Pantone swatch sheet to some pretty exciting, actually legit good travel watercolor solutions that are small enough to bring in your backpack and contain almost everything you need to paint. We've looked at a lot of fun stuff over the years and I think today's review, which is of the superior foldable 58 pan watercolor set. I think you guys will really enjoy it because I had a lot of fun with it today. So I am really excited to go ahead, unbox and swatch this interesting watercolor palette with you guys today. So let's go ahead, grab your paint, grab your brushes and let's make art a habit. I've got something really kind of unique and interesting to share with you guys today and I can't wait to unbox it. If this box looks sort of familiar to you guys, if you guys kind of remember this, then you're probably thinking of the Superior Show You watercolor watch that I reviewed a while back. And I really like this thing. I thought it was a great option for plain air watercolor palette. And while it does have some unusual flaws, it also has some really interesting benefits that I think could make it a great watercolor on the go option for a variety of artists, especially for people who, like myself, struggle to do plain air painting because you just don't have enough hands to juggle it all. This isn't the first superior watercolor product that I've reviewed here. I have also reviewed this <laughs> Whoa, this thing right here, don't love it, was kind of lured in by the format. I thought it was a really interesting format, but I found out I didn't like the format at all, but the paints inside aren't bad. So that's why when Superior released a different folding watercolor palette, I was very intrigued, but I wasn't quite ready to bite. So I know the Frugal Crafter has already reviewed this, and it seemed like she liked it. So I took that as my permission to go ahead and give it a shot myself. Now, why am I reviewing something she's already reviewed? Well, we're very different artists. I'm a watercolor comic artist. And when I'm reviewing art supplies, I'm reviewing it through that lens. It also reminds me of some of the Gensai ta uh, palettes that I've looked at in the past, particularly regarding its color choices. And as I dabble more with Chinese, Korean, and Japanese traditional watercolors, I'm starting to see a lot of similarities. So I'm really excited to unbox this watercolor palette and compare it to some of the other palettes that I have. But I wanted to show you guys my collection of superior watercolor palettes. This one I got kind of duped by because I bought this one off of an Instagram store and I way overpaid. So that's, that's part of my bidder is I paid $50 and this goes for 20 on Amazon. I paid far less for this and I was actually much happier with it. And it does come with some replacement watercolor chiclet pans if you want colors that are not this is my own custom blend of colors from what they included and as you guys will see these paints are incredibly thin but you could very thinly refill this with your own favorite paints and that's what i mean by this has a lot of potential for later use and this is a form that i found a lot more comfortable for travel painting than than this thing i took this thing to the beach with me and this was not comfortable at all I've taken this to the botanical garden and found it to be quite comfortable. And then this, I actually don't intend to use this as a travel palette at all. And before I forget, I have one more superior watercolor palette to show you guys. This one is designed for travel and I actually really like this one for travel. This one, you fill yourself with your own preferred watercolor paints, which I happen to really like because it means I can put exactly what I want in there. And of these palettes, 
This one might be my favorite so far, but I really appreciate that uh, Superior delivers unusual innovative watercolor palettes to the market, something that you don't see enough of. So even if not all of their palettes are the biggest hit for me, I'm always excited to see what they have next. So something else that I like about Superior's water, Superior watercolors is the packaging is always nice gift packaging. You could easily give this to someone else. And they call this a field sketch outdoor painting set. And what I really liked about this when I saw it online is just how unusual the format seems to be. So I have not unboxed this yet. Uh, this seems like it wants to come right off. We'll try to reapply that. I didn't even realize it came with a mixing palette, but I'm not surprised. And it says color. You can choose the color whatever you want, all color in one set. And it says foldable color pan. And I think there's a few different sets available. So what we actually have here, and I thought this was really, really neat. I am such a sucker for a gimmick is a plastic folding watercolor palette. I don't know if these lock yet, we'll find out. It seems like they wanna lock, but they're not gonna lock. Maybe I'm doing it wrong. And then over here, we have, oh, come on. <laughs> okay, I think they installed this wrong because I think this is supposed to be over here so you can get your finger in and you can lift it. Unfortunately, I can't. So uh, I'm gonna do something kind of dangerous. I don't normally use these sort of travel. There we go. So theoretically you could click this all into place. Mine doesn't seem to want to click. Mine's definitely got a mind of its own. And then you could hold it like this and paint like that, which is an interesting way to do travel watercolor, plain air watercolor. That's not why I got it. I cannot see myself doing that with this. I That just seems super unwieldy. And frankly, I like this format a lot better and this format a lot better, but that's okay. Like that's not, I didn't get it for travel watercolor, like I said. Now, this one is also super unwieldy and I was kind of thinking that these would be interchangeable. It does look like they're using the same watercolor chiclets for this, but you guys maybe can see what I mean about this having more Gansai style colors. Let's compare the two just real quick. I'm not gonna swatch both of them today, okay? I do have a really old janky video where I swatch this one and I field test this one. I will link it in the comments, but let me just say, some people might like this palette. I don't really have such a problem with the watercolors inside. They're okay, they're not the best, but they're not terrible. They're, they're student grade and it's about worth $20. What I didn't like is for me, this format was just so bulky, so unwieldy and so prone to tipping that I, I found it to be very difficult to use. So I kind of kept it just for humor's sake, but I think this format is gonna be a lot easier to use. And I'm really excited to kind of compare this to some of my other watercolor sets and to swatch this. So just for demonstration purposes, because I'm sure some of you are considering this palette and maybe you're considering this palette. So I wanna demonstrate both for you guys so that you guys can decide if this is right for you. This one did come with a water brush. I have since removed it. It made it even more unwieldy. It does not have a back ring. Unlike this one, this one does have a palette ring. This one is designed to fan out like so. And you can see if you have your color selection out, it is gonna overlap some. And if you don't allow it to dry completely before you put it away, you are gonna get paint on the back. It can get really messy. And for me, that's just kind of a big uh, for travel watercolors, even for at home. Let me move this really quick. Even at home, so this is the 42 color set. They also have some pastels. I think they even have a larger version of this available. But I wanna expand this all the way out so you guys can see. Now Superior also makes some fanning 
mixing palettes and uh, one sitting in my AliExpress cart right now has been for a couple weeks. I'm really considering because <laughs> I'm a sucker for a gimmick. But you guys can hopefully see when, as you're going through, everything's so on top of each other. It really would have been better if they'd like left some of these palettes, like one palette blank here, two palette blank there, three, et cetera, et cetera. That's a lot of wasted space, but you end up not really being able to access certain colors. You're also very spoiled for colors to the point where it's a bit much, especially when it comes to the reds and oranges, especially because orange is such an easy color to mix. It would have been nice if they'd included some skin tones like they did with this palette instead. Now there are skin tone palettes like this available. I haven't tried them. I thought I've considered purchasing them because it's cute colors. It seems like it's fun, but I haven't yet. The color chips down here have color numbers like C36. They're not really a super accurate reflection of the colors in here. And you can see the mass tones on some of these colors are so dark, it's really difficult to see what you've got, which isn't really a problem. Generally darker mass tones mean fewer optical brighteners, but with this format, it just becomes a struggle to find what you're looking for. You do receive a mixing surface here. Uh, when you have everything folded out, you just can't find anything you're looking for. And this sponge is meant to be something for you to scrub your water brush on and it's removable so you can clean it. You can see that's something that doesn't really work for me. Maybe it works for you. So I'm gonna expand this as much as I can while having as many surfaces available as possible. And hopefully you guys will kind of see what I mean, like if you wanted all your colors out and available, it see, it just kind of, it tips, it's kind of stacked. So you're never really accessing all your colors. I just, this is such a neat idea and it's just such a failure in execution. So rather than getting this, I would recommend you get this and I'm gonna try to link everything when I can. I'm surprised this one isn't more popular to be honest because this is way better so you don't get as they do have a 24 one which is like this long looking thing um you can make your own but this is this is a little bit nicer than the ones you could make yourself i think you get larger pans you do get a mixing surface i have painted with this mixing surface before you do get some small scrub sponges I haven't used them. I mostly just use a paper towel when I'm doing that. And what I really, really like about this is rather than balancing it on my hand, I'm balancing it on my wrist. And that just works out better for me. I also don't have a problem where any of the colors are sitting on top of each other. I can access what I need. And I was able to, they send like, I wanna say 18 colors. So like five of these colors are just packed away somewhere because they're not really the colors I wanted to include, which I like. You can customize it and make your own palette. So finally, with this set, they do have a ring on the back. So you could balance it on your hand if you wanted to. It lays a lot flatter on a desktop than this does. So already I can see this being much more useful, especially for people who have smaller workspaces. You do get a mixing surface. You also get that removable sponge. This one does not, ah, there we go. This one does not come with a water brush. I'm fine with that. I'm not a big water brush person, so that's no big loss for me. And it does come with removable chiclet paints. Now, Superior makes all kinds of really interesting travel watercolor solutions. They even have a watercolor binder that I've been eyeballing for a while now. So I like that they're trying to bring some innovation, some imagination, and a lot of creativity to the watercolor that they offer. I would say they're pretty solidly student grade, but that doesn't make them bad paints and they're very inexpensive. I think this set was about $20 on Amazon, but I'll double check and make sure I get that price right. According to Amazon, it is currently $23.19. It says it was $28.99. I am pretty sure I caught it using Honey when it was way down at 20. Cause I've been using, they're not a sponsor by the way, um, but they'll do, they'll let you know when a price drops and when it's at an all time low. And 
I've been using that to buy my art supplies on Amazon because it actually lets me know when something's a pretty good deal. So we're not affiliated. They don't know I exist. They're not a sponsor, but I love sharing ways for you guys to save money on good art supplies. And that is a way to save money on good art supplies. So this is listed on Amazon is the Xyli W watercolor paint set, but this is made by Superior, the same company that made these, the same company that made this palette, the same company that made this palette here. And it is a Chinese watercolor company. And like I said, they've got some interesting, innovative products. And uh, I'm kind of excited when they, when I find out that they've done something new because they're doing stuff that's different from what we're seeing here in the West. And as somebody who reviews art supplies, I tend to see a lot of the same, the same, the same, the same, the same alcohol markers, everybody's copying each other. Watercolors, it feels like everybody's copying each other. So it's really exciting when somebody does something just a little bit different. So I promise I'm not gonna stall much longer. We are gonna swatch these really soon, but I did wanna show you what they kind of remind me of. And that is the, ideally I would have the 48 set cause that one seems to be even more like this. But these are Kuratake's Gensai Tombi palettes. This is the new uh, seasonal colors. This is, I wanna say they're 36 color set. And these colors in here really remind me of the colors in this set. Now, Gensai is not for everyone. Uh, some people like it, some people don't. I happen to like it a lot, especially for Edagame. So <laughs> what I was kind of thinking is that this set could kind of eventually replace my Mozart Como Rebi set for doing Edagami postcards. But you guys can see we get a lot of bright saturated colors and then we get a lot of pastels. Now, before I get paint all over this thing, I do want to point out that there are areas where they do click into place. So I want to show you this one and this one do snap into place. So put it away, take it back out and then to fold it up. So this one doesn't pop in like that because it folds in. This one folds back, folds in, folds back, folds in folds back so it folds like a fan which is pretty interesting because that other palette that I got that I showed you guys that is also like a fan but this one is like a folding fan and that one just kind of slides out speaking of slide out we've already got an escapee pan so these are friction fit in so you should be able to just slide a nail in and pull them out if you find that they're coming out a little bit too easily. You could always use a little bit of washi tape or a little bit of double stick tape and that should help hold it in place. So we have a lot of colors to swatch today, 58 of them to be exact. So I have pulled out my big Blick Studio cotton rag watercolor paper block. And this is a great time to remind you guys that 
all of this was purchased out of pocket using funds raised from my Patreon. So if you enjoy reviews like this one, if you find them helpful, useful, and informative, you guys know what to do. You can join me over on Patreon at patreon.com slash natosoup because my goal here on the channel is to help you make art a habit. And I do that by sharing helpful reviews, tutorials, and other resources. So to give these the best chance at a good performance, I'm going to go ahead and pre-activate these half pans. I keep wanting to call these half pans. These probably contain less than a half pan's worth of paint. These are really pretty shallow. But uh, quarter pans, long pans, something like that. I'm going to go ahead and pre-activate these with some clean water and give that a chance to soak in before I start swatching. So these colors are quick to activate. They have saturated color. They do muddy the water fast, as you guys will see. I made it a point to show you guys my rinsing cup in between passes, and I cleaned the water in my rinsing cup for every row. So you guys will see we have six rows here. For every row, I did a water change to ensure that I was able to get the cleanest swatch as possible without running myself absolutely ragged. Some of the pans, though, have already started to shrink or buckle. In terms of quality, this reminds me of the Mei Liang watercolors that I've reviewed here on the channel not super long ago. I also wanted to include a shot of the palette itself as I'm swatching it, so that's what you guys see there in the corner. These are definitely student grade, but they're not a bad student grade. There's a lot of colors, so you probably aren't going to need to do a lot of color mixing, which could be useful for less experienced watercolor artists, watercolor artists who want to be able to paint very quickly, or they need to paint a lot of different things, like watercolor comic artists like myself might like this palette. The palette does wiggle a little as I swatch, but it's not nearly as bad as that fan palette. That was basically unusable. It does take up a lot of desk space, which made recording this a challenge and will make using it a challenge for artists as well. The colors have some fun granulation, which is something I'm always looking for when I'm reviewing these kinds of inexpensive paints. Color pollution is definitely noticeable. I try to swatch an entire row between water changes and it definitely muddied and polluted the other colors by the end of the line. So if you're gonna use this palette, you'd need frequent water changes with this palette. And the pastels, which I'm about to get to, really pollute the water. And this is to no one's surprise. You get pastels with watercolor either by leaving the paper still visible, so having a really desaturated mix, or by adding PW6 to the watercolor, and that's going to make the water kind of muddy. But all in all, these problems are pretty minor. I would say this palette is comparable to the Mei Liang and the Himi palettes, and I like both of those palettes, and I'm gonna talk about both of those palettes a little bit more later on in the video. So you guys see, we've reached the pastels. Really some beautiful colors there. They're a fun inclusion, and Superior does make some pastel palettes as well if you want even more pastel goodness. not going to demonstrate this because it's going to make a big old mess but I want to show you guys why you want to let this thing dry out completely <laughs> before you close it look they close on to each other so if you shut this thing before it has a chance to dry you're going to end up with a big old mess and a whole lot of wasted paint I do have to say and I'm probably going to repeat this several times now this palette is fun. It's a weird palette. It's unusual, but it's imaginative. 
playful and has some really fun colors. And even though I'm still waiting on the paint to dry from what has dried and what I've already swatched, this really puts it me in mind of the Mei Liang and the Himi palettes. And I liked both of those palettes. So these are pretty decent paints and I'm getting kind of excited about the upcoming field test. You guys can see this takes up a lot of space. And while it does have a ring on the back that technically you can kind of put on your finger, and you know, that gives you a really big palette for field painting. It takes up a lot of desk space. These pans are very narrow, not narrow, what am I saying? They're shallow, see, they're very shallow. You don't really get a lot of paint in them, but you can actually get a full size brush in there. So if you like to do plein air travel painting and you wanna paint big, or you just prefer to use student grade paints for whatever reason, you're gonna have an easier time getting your brush in this palette than you would in the Himi or in the Mei Liang palette. And we get a lot of pastels, which I have, I always have kind of mixed feelings about pastels in a palette because you could literally just mix colors with white and get a pastel. But this is a big palette. The intention is most of your colors are ready mixed kind of similar to Gensai style watercolors. So even though most of the colors we might want are already mixed, which could be great for doing studies, it could be good for comic work, it could be good for artists who have limited time and don't feel like spending that limited time mixing up all the colors that they're gonna need. I do wanna test and see how well these mix. So I'm gonna do just a little bit of color mixing down here at the bottom. But I gotta tell you guys, this ridiculousness put me in a really good mood. I guess you could probably hear the difference between the top of the video and where I'm at right now, but this is just fun. With color mixing these muddy the water quick, which tells me that a lot of the paint is just gonna go down the drain and that you're probably lost wasting a lot of paint every time you wash your brush. These things are probably full of optical brighteners, but they're still a lot of fun. So for atomic mixing, like you guys see me doing here, it's easy to mix pretty clean color blends, and there's just enough of variance and granulation to keep things interesting. We'd lay down some lines for our optical blending, and that's gonna give us a chance to let it dry. And, uh, you know, I can't help but wonder why is it that my cheap Chinese student grade watercolors handle optical mixing like champs when a lot of other brands don't. You guys will see that in a minute, but I tried to give this as much dry time as possible. It's been incredibly humid, incredibly rainy, which does make it a little bit more difficult, but I let it dry for 30 minutes in a room underneath the fan. So it was fairly dry and I didn't have nearly the color reactivation or lift up or bleeding that I've seen in some other brands and I was actually able to see the color underneath. Yeah, these layer like a champ. I'm pretty impressed so far. I want to end the review by comparing these to my Himi and Mei Liang palettes. But before that, I want to do the lift test. Now, there is some color information available online. I'll have that down in the description below, but not necessarily light fast or pigment information. So I think it's very safe to assume that these are student grade paints. They are great for playing around, having fun. You can take them on vacation. You could probably let your kiddo play with them, but I would not assume that these have any sort of light fast properties or that they're really gonna stand the test of time. So, you know, while they're enjoyable, just kind of keep that in mind. Now, if you do have pigment information for these and you'd be generous enough to share them, please do so either in the comments down below or you can reach out to me on my Discord server, The Paint Box, which you guys are totally welcome and invited to join. I'll make sure a I pop a Discord link down in the description below so you guys can hang out in my fun art-centric art community. 
So pretty much all of these are fairly lifting. The only exception is Periwinkle and Turquoise Blue. So be careful with how and when you layer them. But if you are careful, they can take some glazing as you guys just saw, but not too, too much. I wouldn't treat these like professional grade watercolors and especially not on less expensive papers like cellulose papers. So this was all swatched on a cotton rag paper. Cotton rag tends to t be the best, the best for watercolor the best reflection of the best a paint has to offer which is one of the reasons I actually like to do my unboxing swatch swatches on cotton rag paper is I'm giving it the best chance possible so these performed quite well on this cotton rag paper but I haven't had a chance to test them out on cellulose yet that's probably going to be way down the line so if I ever do use these on cellulose and I find that they handle differently I'll be sure to get back to you guys with what I have found and my suggestions for how to use them on your paper of choice one of the things I haven't really talked about a whole lot and it's kind of an eh thing for me as you can see this is probably designed to be a mixing area not a whole lot of space for it and this palette's pretty big so it will take up a lot of desk space but this is designed to be really easy to clean you just use some water and scrub at it a little bit. You might get some staining since it is plastic, but if you really, really, really care about staining, you can use a melamine sponge, like a Mr. Clean Magic Eraser, and that'll clean most of that staining off. I'd be careful with those though, because they can, I, I have heard they can be kind of carcinogenic, so you definitely wanna be careful when using those, but they will clean your plastic <laughs> palettes if if having a pristine palette is important to you. So like I mentioned earlier, before you put this thing away, you do wanna make sure your colors are all dry. Um, I had the fan on in here and it seems like they're dry. So we'll just go ahead and fold it up for now, just to demonstrate that. I have not seen online where you can buy replacement or refill paint chiclets. And something I did notice while I was doing the swatching is some of these have shrunk. Some of them have also started to kind of bow up and they might just like, wow, <laughs> sorry. Wow, okay, just popped right out there, huh? Uh, but they might also just like the paint itself might pop out of its little tray here. What I like is that you can rearrange these into whatever color order you happen to prefer to work in. You could have like, just your basic favorites right here and that way you don't have to unfold the whole thing if you don't want to this one just does not want to stand um you could have them all up in the top row like whatever works for you and i do appreciate that kind of customizability when it comes to these sort of pre-made watercolor palettes i do wish they sold the refills though because i took i usually avoid consuming other people's reviews when i'm doing my own reviews I don't want them to bias my own opinions. I want to come into it with, you know, an open slate and open mind. Um, but I did notice on Amazon when I was preparing for this review that people were talking about how much they like this palette and that they could see themselves buying many, many more of them. That's a problem that would be very easily solved with just offering refills for this. I mean, yes, you, you do make more money selling these, but you could sell like three packs of each color, you know, make people buy more of them because there's so little in here. You are going to run through it pretty quick if you do like this palette. And it's just a lot of waste to replace, let's say 12 colors, the 12 colors you use the most. And I'm a little uh, about that much waste. So if they do offer refill chiclets, let me know down in the comments below. Um, I basically only know what I can find usually on AliExpress and on Amazon, and that's definitely not indicative of the whole. I would say the Superior Foldable Color Pan is pretty similar to the Mei Liang and Hemi Student Grade Watercolor Palette. So back when I reviewed the Hemi Mia Palette, I should just say Mia, it's not Hemi, the Mia Watercolor Palette, I compared it pretty heavily to the Mei Liang Palette. And I also said that I think I might like the Mia palette a little bit better because you do seem to get more paint and that 
these diamonds allow for larger brushes, something I kind of struggled with with the uh, Mei Liang Pigments palette. So here are the color swatches for the Mia. Here are the color swatches for the Mei Liang. And then here are the color swatches for the Superior. So what's interesting about the Superior is they're all in about the same price range where this is $23. If you watch and you catch it on sale, you can get it for $20. Uh, this is about $20 and this is about $20, depending on where you get them. The difference with this is you get 58 colors rather than 36 colors, which is what you would get for both of these sets. The problem is, while these pans look larger, they are... <laughs> I, I can't help but laugh. They are ridiculous. They're like, they're like Andy's mints thin. They are crazy thin. And uh, that's pretty common. That's pretty standard with the superior watercolors. We've seen that with the watch. We've seen that with that folding palette. So this isn't like you're being cheated or anything. You kind of, if you are any bit familiar with these, they, and they show it in the listing. They show the pans out of the thing. So you, I feel like you know what you're getting. Um, all of these are kind of, I feel like sold as travel sets or student sets. This one does fold up to be pretty compact, but when you unfold it, it takes up so much desk space. So I'll, uh, I'll unfold this one again for you guys. Now it did dry pretty quickly and uh, allowing it to dry does prevent color transfer. But you see, this is like a placemat. This is like a whole place setting. I could have my turkey dinner on this. Whereas the Mia palette, you know, still takes up some space, but not as much space as this. And the Mei Liang palette, same thing, still takes up some space, not as much space as the Superior 58 palette. And with the Mei Liang palette, you do get some fairly sizable mixing surfaces if you want to use it for that. You do get some mixing surface with the Superior, not a whole lot. And I would not really count this as a mixing surface. I mean, you can, I don't. With the Mei Liang palette, you do get a water brush. You don't get that with the Mia palette and you don't get that with the Superior palette. You do get a removable, washable cleaning sponge. I, I think they're kind of gross. I just use paper towels and toss them when I'm done, so. Um, this palette, does not have any way for you to hold it if you were, I mean, you could hold it like this. Actually, that's what this is probably for, for you to hold it like this, it's a handle. But the Mei Liang palette does, although it's a bit flimsy little wire thing. And then this thing does, but I feel like maybe it was installed wrong or it's just in the wrong orientation or something. Sorry, I didn't mean to turn the whole thing upside down because I can't. There we go. All right, so that's a little bit possibly more comfortable. You can spin it, which you can't do with the Mei Liang palette. So I could orient it this direction, which does seem like, yeah, there we go. There we go. So I could not really tell you uh, if this palette is better than the other two. I would say they're comparable, but I feel like they fit different niches and that kind of pulls me into my pros my cons and my verdict let's start with our pros there is a whole lot of color going on here if you're not into color mixing this could be a great palette for you similarly tonally to a gansai palette including pastels so if you like the look of gansai watercolors this could be a great cheaper alternative particularly if you like the look but you don't really like how they handle it folds up into a very compact form so it doesn't really take a lot of space so this could be a great one to put into your backpack although i have to say it is kind of heavy so while it's compact it's not super light in general, it has a nice color gamut. There's a lot of color to choose from. And the colors mix decently well and layer decently well. And honestly, this is just a fun palette. This is a fun gimmick to play with. So what about the cons? Well, you know how I said there's a lot of colors? Maybe too many colors. 
Some colors are really similar, especially some of these yellows. And we could have done with more variety in the earth tones. There's just not a lot of saturation there. Also, there's almost two or also there are two nearly identical olive greens. Another concern is that you have to wait until the paints are fully dry to fold it up and put it away, which in my opinion, doesn't really make it a great plain air watercolor palette because if it starts raining, you know, it's nice to be able to like shut your stuff up and go. Whereas with this, you have to like kind of protect it and shield it and prevent it from getting wetter while you try to find a new location. So I wouldn't really say this is a good one for people who like to do field painting, but Superior does have other better options. So they've got you guys covered. And the paints themselves don't have refills. So basically once you've used like your fate, your 12 favorite colors, you can either refill these from a tube and try to color match, or you can replace the whole thing. And I feel like that can result in a lot of waste. So I would feel a lot better about this palette if Superior offered refills. And it seems like the paint chiclets themselves inside these pans are almost identical to that fan palette. So realistically, they could even just sell us the chiclets and we could refill either palette. And these palettes are, I'm sorry, these pans are shallow, like maybe a fourth of a half pan. And then you combine that with the fact that the paint shrink after getting wet, you're really not getting a whole lot of paint. And then combine that with the fact that these are full of optical brighteners and they get used up fast. You can tell how much paint you're wasting just by looking at the rinse cup. So if you enjoy these paints, if you love these paints, it would be really great if Superior would offer refills. And again, maybe they do, and maybe I just don't know. So what is my verdict on the Superior 58 foldable color pan watercolor set? This is a ridiculous, kind of big, bombastic set that's definitely different in a good way from many of the other student grade watercolor sets I've reviewed here. This one stands out in a crowd and that is what I want to see. The set's layout is downright weird, but not necessarily bad. And while it takes up a lot of space, it also offers a lot of colors, including pastels. It's just plain fun. And I'm struggling to come up with who this is for because I can't think of who it isn't for other than too serious, only fine art, artist who can't stand a little whimsy. Is this going to stand up to professional grade standards? No. Is this thing light fast? Probably not. Is the color information, I'm sorry, is the pigment information easily available? Nope. But is this set fun, unique, and a breath of fresh air in a sea of lookalike watercolor palettes? Absolutely. This set doesn't over promise and in that it kind of over delivers. It gives you a little bit more than what you expected in a format that's kind of fun to play with. I think it's pretty safe to say that I like watercolor. If I didn't like watercolor, I wouldn't have reviewed so many different palettes. I wouldn't be such a sucker for a good gimmick. But there's nothing wrong with enjoying novelty, especially when it's working in your favor. Over the years, and particularly in the past year, I've reviewed some really interesting palettes here on the channel. From Superior's It Came Empty, but I filled it myself, folding collapsible watercolor palette that has its own water bucket, which is pretty cool. I really like this thing. It was in my top 20 of 2020 last year to their kind of weird, not super great, doesn't want to stay open watercolor fan palette that I thought was such a good idea, but was not great in concept to their interesting watercolor watch that I actually thought was pretty dang nifty. I've also reviewed a lot of student grade watercolors here on the channel recently because honestly, I've reviewed a lot of professional grade watercolors and one of the number one complaints I hear is that's too expensive 
I'm just gonna turn around and buy Cotman. And I'd like to be able to offer some alternatives that are less expensive than Cotman and perform as well or better than Cotman. And I feel like I've found a lot of great alternatives here on the channel. And most of that came from me looking to China to solve the watercolor problem. I mean, some of my favorite palettes that I've reviewed this year are the Mei Liang Pretty Excellent Watercolors. These are made by Paul Rubens, as well as the Mia Watercolors. So you guys are probably familiar with the Himi Mia Gouache, same company. And then today, I was delighted with the Superior Foldable Color Pan Palette. I mean, this palette is weird but I like it. I'm here for it. Is it a travel palette? No. Does it take up a whole lot of space? Yes. Are the pans replaceable? I mean, they pop out, but you can't buy replacements for it. Is it going to take up your entire desk while you're using it? Uh, yeah, but look, it's got so many pretty colors and it performs quite well for a student grade watercolor palette. It even puts me in mind of Kuratake's Gensai Tombi palette, probably closer to their larger 48 color range than this 36 color range, but you guys get my point. So I had a lot of fun unboxing and swatching this palette today, and I'm really looking forward to being able to put it to the field test, seeing how these hold up. I have high hopes for them, but the only way to really know how well these are going to work is by actually using them. So I hope you guys found today's unbox and swatch review to be helpful, useful, and informative. I was so pleasantly surprised by this. It really ended up kind of making my day. And I love that art supplies have the power to do that. A good gimmick can bring a smile to your face. And I'd love to see more American companies adopting this kind of innovation and trying to come with come up with products that are not only fun to use and a delight to use and work well, but bring a smile to your face. And I definitely feel like this particular palette did just that. This thing is so goofy. Look how good, it's like a folding screen. This thing is super goofy, I love it. I definitely feel like this did exactly that. So I hope you guys found this review to be helpful, useful, and informative. If you enjoyed it, it'd really mean a lot to me if you left me a big old thumbs up. If you're not familiar with my work, I am a watercolor comic artist, and that is the lens that I view watercolor and watercolor supplies through. So if you want to get a better idea for where I'm coming from, it would really mean a lot to me if you guys took a moment and checked out my watercolor webcomic. 7 Inch Kara. You can read it for free at 7inchkara.com or if you're a, f wow, tongue twister time. If you're a fan, there we go. If you're a fan of the Dead Tree format, you can order a copy through Amazon of volume one or volume two, or you can order your copies through the Natto shop at nattosoup.com slash shop and get a free charm with your purchase. So I hope you guys enjoyed this review. I hope it was helpful, useful, and informative, and I hope it'll help you make art a habit. So have a wonderful day, guys. Bye!